I'm State Representative Kate Harper of the 61st District in Montgomery County. Today, as you can probably tell, we're taping during the holiday season and we're going to do a tour of the Pennsylvania Capitol. Now, it looks especially beautiful during this time of year, but it's a beautiful capital any time of year, and we could welcome you up here. Just give my office a call, and we can make the arrangements for you. Shortly, I'll be joined by one of our regular tour guides here at the Capitol, who will talk to you about the Pennsylvania State Capitol, the People's House, where I work, and what goes on inside the building. Stay with us. Here we are with Tammy, one of our regular tour guides here at the State Capitol. She has given this tour many, many times. Tammy, I usually like to let my viewers know a little bit about my guests. So can you tell us how did you get this job and do you like it and who do you talk to mostly? Hi, my name is Tammy Ron. I come from a little small town in western Pennsylvania called, its name is Ickesburg. I came here 18 years ago. I lost my first husband at the age of 38. I needed a job that had great benefits, so this is how I came to this job. I've been doing tours for 17 years, but I've been here at the Capitol for 18 years. The most frequent uh, visitors are fourth graders from all over Pennsylvania. Now, what kind of questions do you get that you find interesting? Well, a lot of times they'll ask us how large the capital is, how many pounds it is, um, what colors, how we came to choose the colors of our capital. The most is about the floor here in the main rotunda. They love the little square. They want to know how many squares are in the floor. But there's all kinds of questions that we get. Well, the floor actually is Mercer Tile, yes, right from Bucks County, which is very close to my district. Yes. So, Henry uh, Chapman Mercer, yes, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I don't blame you. So, um, when you first meet visitors right here in the rotunda, what do you talk to them about? And well, you can tell them. Yep, we'll tell them uh, the fact that the first Capitol building burnt to the ground February the 2nd, 1897. A man by the name of Joseph Houston from Philadelphia designed our present Capitol. They began in 1902 and they finished our structure in 1906 at the cost of $13 million. Today, it is said to be priceless. In fact, we are considered to be the most ornate capital in the United States. The main capital building sits on two acres of ground. From this tiled floor to the tip of the dome is 272 feet, almost the length of a football field. Our dome is patterned after St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and it weighs 52 million pounds. Wow. The white shiny walls are Vermont marble. The outside of our capital is Vermont granite. The staircase is in an Italian marble called Carrera, and our staircase is patterned after the grand staircase of the Paris Opera House. The floor is the original floor. For this building, it's over 100 years old. It was done by Henry Chapman Mercer from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. It's made of Moravian tile, and it has nearly 400 picture tiles in it. They depict primitive industries, early modes of transportation, wildlife, and insects. It's also called the carpet of history. The light standards that you see all around here on the first floor weigh one ton each and wow. they're made of bronze case. I feel skinny by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> the letter X that you see shining back out at you from their globes is caused by the diamond cut in the glass. There's regular light bulbs in there. That's characteristic of a lot of our lights here in our capital. All the gold that you see here and we'll see in every room that's here in the capital, the main rooms, is real gold. It's 23 karat gold leafing. We do not know how much gold is in the capital. They never kept track of it when they put it in, so we have no idea how much gold we have. Back on October 4th, 1906, that was the day of our dedication, President Theodore Roosevelt was here for our dedication. He stood in this room, looked around, and said, this is the handsomest building I ever saw. The artwork within the dome was done by Edwin Austin Abbey. He was from Philadelphia also. He did this room 
and the House of Representatives. So shall we go up and look at the House sure. of Representatives? That would be great. Well, here we are in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, and it's unusually quiet because we're not here in session today. So I'm going to let Tammy explain, if you would, Tammy, talk about the beautiful room that we're in and all of the things that make it so great. Perfect. The desks are the original desks from 1906, and they are made of mahogany from Belize, Central America, so they are over 100 years old. The marble that wraps around the bottom of this room is from the Pyrenees Mountains in France. It was donated to our capital by monks. After they donated it, their quarries were closed, never to be reopened. Now the paintings in this room were done by Edwin Austin Abbey, the same gentleman who did our rotunda. The painting here in the middle is the largest painting in the capital. It's called the Apotheosis of Pennsylvania. It shows a genius estate at the top in white, looking down over prominent people of, in this painting of Pennsylvania. The man there in the center with the red cape draped across his lap is William Penn. To your left at his shoulder is Benjamin Franklin. To your right at his shoulder is Robert Morris. Down in the left-hand corner on horseback is General George Meade. The man standing there in the black suit with his arm outstretched is Thaddeus Stevens. Directly across from him, the older gentleman there with his arm wrapped around the little boy is Stephen Gerard, founder of Gerard University. To the right of the apotheosis is the reading of the Declaration of Independence. To the left of the apotheosis is William Penn accepting the peace treaty from the Delaware Indians. The circular painting up in the middle of the ceiling is called the Passage of Hours. It shows 24 maidens in various dress indicating the 24 hours of the day. The sun, the moon, the stars, and the Halley's Comet is also in that painting. They said that the Halley's Comet was visible on that year of 1910, 1911, so he put that in his painting. Directly in the back of the room here is Baron von Steuben instructing his Valley Forge troops. Now the stained glass windows across the top, there's, ten, there's 14 in this room and 10 more in the Senate. All 24 represent early ideas, industries, sciences, and arts of Pennsylvania. They were all done by William Van Ingen, who was a student of Tiffany, the famous glass blower. They do weigh 200 pounds each. There's four layers of glass to them, and they are lit by natural sunlight. Now the two small chandeliers in this room weigh two ton each. That's about the size of a hippopotamus. The four larger ones are four and a half ton. That's about the size of a large male African elephant. About every two years, they do erect a scaffolding in this room and they'll change all the light bulbs at one time, which add up to a little over a thousand in this room alone. There is a panel that swings out of the large chandeliers and a person of six foot stature is able to stand inside of them. Now let me tell you, when we're all here, there are 203 House members, each of us representing about 65,000 people, 65,000 of our neighbors. Each of us sits in one of these desks. In fact, although the desks are beautiful, they're a little small for today's legislators, and it's considered a plum earned by seniority to get an end of the row seat. I'm happy to say I have the last seat in the last row, prime real estate for the House. Most of the time it's noisy because you get 203 gregarious people in the room. They're not only debating at the microphones, they're often talking to one another and debating in the, in the aisles and at the desks. Sometimes the speaker who's in charge of the room has a hard time keeping us in order, but he has a gavel. And there are other moments when you can hear a pin drop. For example, when we have to honor a fallen officer or an, an honor a fallen soldier. It is so quiet, you can't hear anything, as it should be, so that we respect great Pennsylvanians from all walks of life who give to their neighbors. But most of the time, it's a pretty noisy, busy place. If you'd like to visit the house, 
The best days to come are Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when we're in session. And that's so that you can see the legislative process, the making sausage, if you will, as it occurs. We have a gallery where people can sit and watch. Also, PCN, the Pennsylvania Cable Network, generally follows us gavel to gavel. Some important times of the year are February, when we're dealing with the governor's budget address and then appropriations hearings, and June, when we're actually generally voting on trying to make the revenues that we expect meet the expenses that we have to pay out. Also, another very busy time is close to the end of the session, when I would say October or November of the second year. A session's two years, and it starts right after the elections in January. As you probably know from that little film strip you saw when you were in fourth grade, how a bill becomes a law is a pretty torturous process. What happens is a member of the House or Senate, but often a House member does this, introduces a bill, gets it written, and files it. The bill is then sent to a committee, perhaps a committee like mine, the local government committee, or a committee like transportation or judiciary. Each of the committees specializes in a certain area of the law. The bill must be voted on by the committee before it is sent to the floor for three considerations and a debate. If it passes, it then is sent to the to the, from the House to the Senate of Pennsylvania and the process starts all over again. It often happens that the Senate amends the bill and then it has to come back on concurrence. So you can see that out of 4,000 bills that get introduced in every two-year session, a few hundred make it out of one house or the other, and a few dozen actually make it to the governor's desk and pass his pen into the law. But it all happens and it all starts here in the people's house. It's a beautiful place to work even when it's very busy. It doesn't surprise me that the hours of the day are on the ceiling. Some days we have been here until late into the evening or early into the next morning trying to get things done. In general, the House and Senate meet, I would say, either 11 o'clock to about 6 or 8 p.m., or sometimes later when things are very busy. So just as a successful bill gets out of the House and goes to the Senate for consideration there, that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk over to the Senate chambers and see what that's like and show it to you. Well, now we're in the Senate. Of course, my job doesn't bring me over here too often, and when I come, I'm a spectator looking to see what's happened to one of my bills or some piece of legislation that I'm interested in. But it's another beautiful room, so tell us about it. It is a beautiful room. There's 50 members here in the Senate. The desks are the original desks from 1906, just like in the House, and they're made of mahogany from Belize, Central America. In the very front of the room is where our Lieutenant Governor, Michael Stack, sits, and he is president over the Senate. Now, the voting in this room is still the old-fashioned way. It's voice roll call. The clerk will call out each member's name, and they'll vote by a yes or a no. But sometimes they do seem to vote much quicker than that. Mm. I've seen them do things A to Z or something. Have you seen that? Yes, I have. And that's usually a vote that they've already discussed and know that it's something that's flat across the board as far as their voting, yes or no on that. So yes, I have seen that. Now the carpet is the original pattern carpet in this room. It has been replaced, but the original loom is the McGee's carpet in Bloomsburg, which isn't McGee's any longer, but this is the original pattern carpet in this room. Now the marble that wraps around the bottom of this room is from Ireland. The drapes are 87 pounds a pair and they're gold French velvet. The chandeliers in this room are two ton each. The stained glass windows across the top are the same that's in the house in that William Banningen did these also. But they're all different and they all represent early ideas, industries, sciences and arts of Pennsylvania. Now, the artwork in this room was done by Miss Violet Oakley. She was 28 years old when she was commissioned to paint for the Capitol back in 1902. At a time when women were not normally given big commissions like this one. They weren't even allowed to vote. They weren't even allowed to be on the House or the Senate floors. Well, that wouldn't work today. <laughs> she did 43 paintings in all for our Capitol, and it took her 25 years 
to finish her commission. She did the Senate, the Supreme Court room, and the governor's reception room. Now the painting that spans the whole way across the top of the room is called International Understanding. It's her mystical vision of a world in unity and that's what she calls that figure there in the middle in blue. She felt to have unity, you needed to band all forms of slavery which are represented in the paintings to the right of unity and all war which is represented in the paintings to the left of unity. Now the four underneath are of historical times in the birthing of our country. To the far left is General George Washington riding from Philadelphia to the Battle of Brandywine in 1777. Well, that did not end well as I recall. Mm. <laughs> right beside that 10 years later is George Washington presiding over the Constitutional Convention in 1787, two years before he became our first elected president. Now to the far right is General George Meade taking his Union troops to the Battle of Gettysburg July 1st, 2nd and 3rd, 1863. Right beside that is Abraham Lincoln giving his famous Gettysburg Address on November the 19th, 1863. Now directly right behind us here on the right is called the Slave Ship Ransom. The legend goes a man bought a ship full of slaves and, and set them free in Nova Scotia. To the left is called the latch string legend. It is said that if you had that red latch string hanging out your doorpost, you were people of peace and the Indians would leave you alone. So I noticed that we have the same kinds of um, chandeliers and things here that we had in the house. Yes, yes they are. And everything uh, weighs two ton each. That letter X that you see shining back out at you from the globes that you see along the wall, that's caused by the diamond cut in the glass. There's regular light bulbs in there. That's characteristic of a lot of our lights here in our capital. All right, so let's talk a little bit about process. I did say that many, many bills start in the House and wend their way over here. And it is often frustrating for House members that the Senate takes longer time to deal with them. I've been reminded by senators I know that the Senate is the deliberative body and they need to take their time to make sure that the legislation is correctly written in all respects before they pass on it. Um, in addition, the Senate represents larger areas, so their problems that they're dealing with may span larger areas than the House members. It's just a matter of that. The, um, the House and Senate tried to work together to get the best laws done and the best budget done, but we have different opinions on many things, and, and it takes quite a bit of time for us to come together. I would say that most people think of the House and the Senate as beings that sort of move on their own, but they don't. There are actually 50 individual senators, 203 individual House members, and one guy in the governor's mansion who has to sign whatever it is that gets through. So in fact, the process of legislating is very deliberate and slow and cumbersome. I do have to say that some people have said that when they designed this beautiful building, it was at a time when architects believed if you made beautiful buildings, people would do beautiful things in them. And I can't always say that we live up to that, quite frankly, but it is something that we can aspire to and think about. In addition, and I've said this before, but if you want to come up and visit it, I think the citizens of Pennsylvania should do that. This building belongs to you. This is your beautiful building. And I think you have guides like Tammy who can tell you about it, but come on up, it's gorgeous and it's worth the uh, two hours it would take to get here from my district. Now, later we're also going to see if we can get into the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, which also has artwork. But let's just look around here a minute and see. Now, Tammy, I noticed there were ante rooms. How does the Senate use those rooms? Those are called the caucus rooms. One side is the Democrats, the other side is the Republicans. That's where they'll meet for any debates or anything that they have to do within their caucus. It's called the Rules Committee Rooms. Okay, now we have caucus rooms in the House as well, but because there are so many of us, one is on the first floor, right near that Moravian tile we saw recently, and the other is on the fourth floor. 
And as a member for 16 years, I've actually been in both of them. And a lot of work gets done in the caucus rooms. In, in the caucus rooms, we debate the bills and we ask the questions that you might not want to ask on the floor for fear of looking foolish or otherwise. And uh, so that when you come out, you actually understand the legislation you're voting on. So the caucus is actually a pretty important function. And when we are hard at work reviewing bills and talking about amendments, we really don't notice how beautiful the rooms are. So true, so true. I have to say that I actually like the painting of Lincoln at Gettysburg. I, I think it correctly expresses the deep sadness that he felt on that occasion. And I don't think that uh, there's any other painting I've seen of Lincoln at Gettysburg that does it so well. His big lanky frame just about drooping with the grief. So uh, I think that is a beautiful reminder to the senators of the seriousness of the job of running our Commonwealth and ultimately for Congress and running our, our country. So I think one that's important. Thing, yeah, one other thing I didn't mention is the doorways here. If you notice, they're very low. And the saying is that the senators in the day used to bow before they came onto the Senate floors to keep them humble. So these doorways have been made low so that the senators are reminded before they enter into this room to be humble as they walk in. And that reminder of Lincoln reminded me of that. Well, it's a beautiful room, but we've got some other things that we want to talk about and see. And what we'd like to do next is go to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court room. Okay. Uh, now, the Supreme Court has a beautiful new building nearby, but this is their historic courtroom, which they still use yes, they for court proceedings. It's quite impressive to argue to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in this room. Wait till you see it. We're standing outside the Pennsylvania Supreme Court courtroom, which is in the top of the rotunda, if you will, on the fourth floor. It's another gorgeous room, beautiful and filled with artwork. So Tammy, can you tell us a little bit about the artwork in the Supreme Court courtroom? Yes, the artwork within the courtroom was done again by Miss Violet Oakley. The painting above the doorway is called Divine Law. And in that painting is love, law, and wisdom. Going down the left-hand side across the bottom, in orange, is a large letter L. Inside the L is the O, the V, and the E. For law, take that large L again. Going down the bridge of the girl's nose in blue is a large A. Connected to the bottom of the A is a large W. For and, take the large A again. The N is on the tip of her nose, the D is on her chin. For wisdom, take that large W across the bottom and inside of it, the angels are holding the ISDOM. Love, law, and wisdom, she felt, made divine law. Now the Supreme Court's filled with all this beautiful art by Violet Oakley with, oh, I don't a lot of symbolism about love and law and justice and things like that. A lot of lawyers are surprised when they recognize the Ten Commandments are there. So what was Violet Oakley trying to do with her artwork in the Pennsylvania Supreme Courtroom? She uh, said that she was in embodying the whole spirit of the Supreme Courtroom, what it means to Pennsylvania with all of those different laws. And I think uh, the Code of Hammurabi or something is there also, something like that? The, the, the three courtrooms, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, the, um, the courtroom for the, the uh, United States Supreme Courtroom, and then also the international courts. She has all three of those courts in the very back of the room, in this room. So Violet Oakley, who starts painting the Capitol when she's 28, finishes 25 years later, she was trying to inspire the judges who sit in this courtroom with all of the history of laws throughout the universe, I guess, yes. with these paintings. Yes, all from all of the different angles of the laws, yes, the state, the U.S., and the international laws. And the fact that the Ten Commandments are there is just part of the whole history of law and not really a religious expression for her so much as it was an expression of where the laws came from. Yes, exactly.
So uh, in the Supreme Court room, it's still used today, isn't it? Yes, it is. In fact, it's used today. That's why we're not in there. At this moment, At that's this right, moment, yes. because the Board of Pardons is sitting in there, and sometimes yes. the Pennsylvania Supreme Court sits in there, the highest court in our state. Yes. Next step after this is the United States Supreme Court, and that's an entirely different tour. Yes. The Board of Pardons, the Superior, and the Supreme all use this room. And I'll bet the judges love it. Yes, they do. Well, that is a beautiful tribute to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court room and the artist, a woman who really made her career here at a time when women didn't have careers. Yes, she did. That is correct. And uh, Violet Oakley, I know because I've seen books about her in other states, is actually a person whose artwork is respected nationwide. Yes, it is. And so that's another part of our beautiful capital here. Now we just have just a minute or two left. Let's go outside and look at the interior of the rotunda, yes. Tammy, and let's talk about what's out there. Okay. Well, Tammy, here we are. We're standing inside the dome. We're on the fourth floor and I'm looking out at more beautiful artwork, but particularly I see ships. I see what looks like an iron foundry and I see people who are Obviously, allegorical figures, uh, science and art, and what's this all about? The artwork done in the main rotunda here was done by Edwin Austin Abbey, the same gentleman we talked about in the House of Representatives. Directly across from us is a tribute to William Penn, shows the angels guiding the settlers across the Atlantic in 1682. The other three lunettes are tributes to the oil coal and the steel industries. Those were the three leading industries in Pennsylvania at the time our capital was built. That's all changed now. Now it's agriculture, tourism, and manufacturing, such as we use this for our fourth graders, such as Hershey's chocolate and Crayola crayons. Not to mention Snyder's pretzels exactly. and hers potato chips. Exactly. The four circular pictures in the dome are called medallions and they are believed to be the four forces needed to uphold civilization. They represent science, art, law, and religion. Well, that seems like a good place to end. I know you have a lot more to talk about this beautiful building and that you would be happy to take any of my constituents around on a tour if I get them up here to Harrisburg. Yes, we would. We would love that. Well, Tammy, thank you for thank being you. my guest today. I think we've uh, shown the, the building is just gorgeous. That's all the time we have for Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Kate Harper. Please contact me at my district office in Bluebell if you'd like to come up and see the Capitol and we'll make the arrangements for you. And listen to us next time for Legislative Report.